It is now down to two candidates who will compete in a runoff to become the next mayor of Chicago. Paul Vallis and Brandon Johnson are the voters' choices. We spoke with Johnson this morning about his next challenge and why he feels he's a better candidate than Vallis. Johnson describing himself as a progressive and outlining his plan to keep the city safe. We're going to promote uh, 200 more detectives to help solve crime. Uh, we're going to spend to make sure that the consent decree is being enacted with all expediency. But we're also going to double the amount of young people that we hire across the city. Um, there's a direct correlation between youth employment and violence reduction. We're going to reopen our mental health centers. The trauma that we are experiencing is is is, is uh, quite overwhelming. And we cannot continue to put police officers in position uh, where they have to be social workers and counselors, right? So we're going to be smart about it. Former public school CEO Paul Vallis won big on the north side, as well as in parts of the southwest and northwest sides. Vallis focusing on public safety, promising to hire many more police officers so that 911 calls no longer go unanswered. And he launched his runoff campaign last night saying crime will continue to be his number one priority. Public safety is the fundamental right of every American. It is a civil right. And it is the principal responsibility of government. And we will have a safe Chicago. Vallis plans to thank voters and talk to reporters in just a few minutes now, and we will carry those comments live when he does. Mayor Lightfoot finished third behind Vallis and Johnson and will now leave office May 15th. She's the first incumbent not to win re-election here since 1983. Political editor Mike Flannery joins us now, and Mike has some insights on what happened last night. Mike, how did the mayor fall so far from having carried all 50 wards in the runoff last go round. It is stunning, uh, Roseanne, but uh, let's, uh, let's acknowledge, first of all, that uh, there were very tough challenges that the mayor had to face, from the pandemic to the civil disturbances and the multiple looting rampages that uh, hit the city following the killing of George Floyd in Minnesota. Now, that said, the mayor's 2019 run uh, for a public office was uh, Lightfoot's first ever entry into uh, the political arena, and uh, she had never stood for public office before, and she seemed to make every rookie mistake it was possible to make. Most of all, failing to understand that governing a city as big and troubled as Chicago is really a team sport. She picked a lot of fights, and a lot of the fights were unnecessary fights. Um, she, yeah, she did some good. Nobody can deny that she didn't do some good, but she made a lot of enemies along the way, and she didn't have to. I mean, when you win 50 wards, that means that you have won the uh, the, the benevolence of the entire city. They want to see you do good. They've put their trust in you, an unknown. And she didn't take that to mean that she had, she, well, she took it to mean that she had the power instead of the position. Indeed, uh, six African-American candidates challenged Lightfoot in this contest. Virtually all of them, it has to be said, started out four years ago as the mayor's natural allies when she first took office. Perhaps third ward city council member Pat Dowell symbolized this phenomenon best of all. A staunch and outspoken defender of Mayor Lightfoot for several years, uh, Lightfoot uh, made Dowell uh, the chair of one of the city council's most powerful committees, but Dowell ended up defecting to Brandon Johnson, holding a news conference where Dow blasted Lightfoot's inability to work cooperatively with others and the mayor's propensity for verbal abuse. Dowell's backing of Brandon Johnson was perhaps the most definitive public signal that some very powerful black insiders were deeply worried that all of these uh, difficult issues uh, would only get worse in a Lightfoot second term. Indeed, the mayor herself noted that at the age of 60, she wasn't about to change her style. Okay, so now let's look at the matchup. Now we have Brandon Johnson versus Paul Vallis. Let's talk about these candidates, Mike, what they deal with going forward, starting with Johnson's tax plans. Well, uh, that's that's uh, going to be uh, an issue. Uh, the is You're going to hear a lot about that from the Vallis campaign and maybe even from some independent expenditure groups um, on, the, uh, you know, uh, the, the 
eight hundred million to two hundred to two billion dollars worth of new taxes. Uh, Johnson, uh, or a few minutes ago, we heard him talking about how he wants to hire thousands of uh, youth for jobs. Right. He wants to uh, increase social services. To pay for that, these taxes uh, are, are going to uh, be expensive for uh, some Chicagoans, and uh, that's going to be a, a very interesting uh, phenomenon the way that plays out. On the other hand, we uh, already have uh, Brandon Johnson attacking Paul Vallis, uh, uh, claiming that uh, he's left uh, rack and ruin in his wake, uh, hitting uh, his tenure, Vallis's tenure at the Chicago Public Schools, at the Philadelphia Public Schools, and elsewhere. Uh, Vallis does have some enemies mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, from Philadelphia in particular. The former mayor, Michael Nutter, uh, really uh, has some grudges about uh, Paul Vallis. Uh, he talked about them uh, last year on my uh, show, uh, Flannery Fired Up. I had the former Philadelphia mayor. I suspect he's going to come back in. We may see a congressman from uh, Philadelphia, uh, Brendan Boyle, uh, also come out uh, taking pot shots uh, at Vallis on these issues. Um, it's going to be a rollicking rocket sled ride of a campaign. Right, and all crammed into what, four weeks? Five weeks, Five yeah. weeks. Five, we're going to count the votes in this one. Five weeks right. from last night. It's going to be a lot of action. Thank you, Mike.